Hey guys, welcome back to the virtual Junior Ranger Outdoor Adventure Program Week 7. This week's topic is hunting. I'm here today with City of Brownsville Athletic Supervisor Raul Marwoto. This week we've got plenty of things in store for you guys. We're going to have a, a Q&A with Sergio Vasquez. He is the Laguna Cascosa National Wildlife Refuge Assistant Refuge Manager, also the hunt coordinator. Um, we'll also be talking about new upcoming hunts, hunt opportunities that are available to the public right now for sign up, guys. Um, we're also going to hopefully go on a hunt, um, show you how to gut skin and quarter um, your mammal, and then after that, maybe turn it into a wall hanger for you to cherish for years to come. So hopefully we're going to have a good week, get a lot done. So, uh, everybody knows you fish, do you hunt? You know, uh, never uh, shot a rifle um, to, to harvest an animal. So, that type of hunting I haven't done. So, I know that there's different styles of hunting, different equipment that's needed, uh, different areas, yeah, definitely. Um, how to access land and things like that that we'll get into. But um, one of the things that I interested to know is how would I even try to venture into that world of hunting you know just getting into it yeah get, I mean, get harvesting a mammal yeah gotcha. there's plenty of ways um, one of my favorite ways are the draw hunts uh, we actually have the draw hunts you go online you put your name in for the application it's three dollars per category there's three categories and uh, your chances of getting drawn you know they're there it's not a for sure thing but it's one of the most affordable ways to get drawn uh, you put your name for that raffle, it's $3. If you actually do get drawn, it's either $130 uh, or $80, depending on what hunt you're on. Either way, I mean, that's probably the best prices you'll find in Texas, easily, hands down. And you access that through the Laguna website? or uh, That one's actually done through TPWD, and uh, they, they handle the raffle system, but you will be hunting on the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife property. Uh, then you also have... Uh, areas that you can just go to um, that are, belong to the state and you have to buy a special permit on your hunting license and you'll be uh, allowed access to those properties. You also have uh, plenty of uh, public land. Just Texas isn't too big on it. We don't have much like other states do. So we do have a lot of leases, a lot of private lands where you can go and uh, you know, you'll pay an annual fee and it's either available to you all year round for whatever you want to do, whether you want to go and just you know, walk the trails or, or harvest a pig or some bunnies or, you know, put some food on the table. Um, or they only open to, to you during deer season. I mean, you, you mentioned I do a lot of fishing. We do have a boat. Um, there is... Oh, uh, you have uh, access to government yeah. own lands. And uh, there's actually a very good area uh, just off of the Arroyo. And it's, uh, it's it's open to the public. It's for everyone. And it belongs to the public. It's government owned land. So it's, it's really nice. It's a great opportunity, uh, especially for those people who have access to get out there. And, and is there a fee for that type of access to that land or? That one, uh, it doesn't run a fee, but you have to go ahead and know exactly where you're at and what you're doing because it does get a little iffy on there. Um, a lot of that property is butt up against the refuge property, so you got to be careful when it comes to trespassing, you know, where you're shooting, where that um, mammal's going to travel after after it's shot and maybe it doesn't go down right away. You got it, because uh, when we were out there and we're trying to uh, get into the Laguna Madre, you're going down the arroyo you see a lot of blinds people go out there oh the, definitely they got a there's public duck blinds out there so yet again it goes to if you have access to it they're there for you and those public duck blinds are those, those things are amazing they're for where they're at they're 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 great so I mean, they're on the water and they're in really good shape the property itself i mean you can actually uh i guess dock your boat well not dock it but beach it and then just go on to the property and you have your harvestable animals of uh especially invasive species, hogs and milk that um, during deer season, of course, you can also harvest a, a white tail deer. So then I would definitely have to make sure that I prep differently. The main two styles is always going to be archery and rifle. But then it breaks down into its subcategories. So you have uh, art, and especially archery, you have everything from recurve, longbow, compound, uh, crossbow, and those are all classified under archery. Um, each of them have its own special, you know, little things about it. But then you also go into the styles of stalking or blind hunting. And uh, blind is just, you know, a nice little four by four box that you sit down in and wait. Yeah, that's where you're at. It's sometimes a ground blind, 
you know, just level to the ground, or you're sometimes climbing maybe a story, two stories, and honestly, the possibilities are endless, and once you find your way of hunting, you stick to it, you learn it, and it's just something you're going to become really good at over the years, so me personally, I like stock hunting, um, there's nothing better than just following tracks, following scat, and hopefully getting up there, and that surprise moment is what me as a, as a hunter that's what I'm looking for here in South Texas I mean it gets really creative especially because we have invasive species um, with the feral hog you can harvest it by any means necessary so that's when thermal uh, comes into play a lot of people just go all out and they have silencers thermal and, and they're they go from a normal way of hunting to hunting with dogs and hunting with spears I mean it gets it gets pretty crazy um, but when it comes down to it, in my opinion, all you need is a good, reliable rifle. And that's it. Any caliber will do. Here in South Texas, I mean, 270, 308, 30 they're all going to work just fine. Uh, we don't have any, you know, the, the biggest mammal we have is, a, is an invasive species, and it's a male guy antelope. And any caliber can take it down there. It goes back to shotguns. So then we're talking about styles and the equipment that you're type of styles you mentioned having a good rifle obviously if we're going to get into um, archery, yeah. archery there's there's equipment that you're going to need to do some type of bow hunt oh yeah and I, I definitely try to steer people towards archery um you know i have nothing against rifle hunting i am primarily a rifle hunter uh i like being sure that that mammal is going to go down and i'm, I'm not going to have to track him for a little while you know i just want him to right there and that, that's just my personal preference but archery you learn so much more it's it's it feels different everything about it is different you're there you're closer i mean every single thing you do from your breaths you take uh from what you even had in the morning you know they, they can smell your breath so if they wind you that's it your shot opportunity is gone and that, that's one of the things that i do like about archery it's, it's, it's more challenging and it's just you learn a lot more so I know we had a we had a week earlier where we where we did uh, archery lessons and we had some practice bows uh, and uh, uh, practice arrows and obviously there's different tips for that. So if you're going to go hunting, you're going to want to change out that tip. Correct? Of course, you want to practice it. You know, practice it. That's what you're going to be constantly shooting with. Um, then you get into your broadheads. There's mechanical. There's fixed. I personally prefer fixed just because I mean you get Native Americans taking down game with arrowheads. So say oh it expands and it gives you a cut radius of you know four inches that, that's great um everything that's mechanical can fail and it, it happens quite often with those things fixed blades are just fine um and, i mean it's, it's just if they were shooting with arrowhead and knocking down game nice stainless or, or some kind of scalpel on the blade is going to go right through it'll be just fine so now we know that different styles are going to require different type of equipment um, we know that we need a place to go and have access to different types of property. What type of game is there down here in South Texas that we can harvest? Well, I'll stick to, uh, I mean, there, there's plenty, uh, coyotes, uh, even foxes is one, but I'm going to stick to what we offer at Laguna, which is going to be the white-tailed deer, the feral hog, uh, nail guy. But the main thing that people really go after here in South Texas is white tail deer and that's you know widely hunted it's, it's something that if you're a hunter that's maybe how you got into it or it's for sure something that you're currently doing if you're doing white tail hunting even if you're starting pig hunting um but definitely white tail is amazing at laguna beautiful big buck um and then you know you're gonna go into all of your other you know just dinner on the table you got your rabbits so yeah. plenty of different stuff like that um but mainly I stick to, you know, a simple rule of whatever you harvest, you're going to eat. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to knock down a coyote or a bobcat, even though, yeah, you can't eat bobcat, you can't eat coyote. I just don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not something I'm craving. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're talking about bobcats and we're talking about coyotes, and you've mentioned invasive species that are here located in South Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. Mm -hmm. um, can you educate us a little bit on how hunting helps conservation? Oh, hunting plays a big part in conservation, uh, especially in just, I mean, if we're to just stick to just the invasive species part of it, 
you're looking at um, species control, you know, nail guys, um, they get all the way up to about 900 pounds. I mean, it's a big, big mammal. That's obviously the biggest one that there is there, but I mean, on average, a female uh, cow, she's about you know, 250, 500 pounds, which is there. And the males, I mean, they're, they're just above the female. I mean, they're, they're big animals. And they run into fences. They don't even try jumping them. They're either going to go under or just ram them and knock them down. If they get in the way of vehicles, I mean, who knows? You might not walk away from that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bad collision. So we do need to do our part with controlling that. Then you also have to throw hogs. Um, you know, you can get hogs eating up 20 acres in one night easy. I mean, it's just the amount that they, the destruction that they cause to the farmland is terrible. Farmers absolutely do not want to hear it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a constant problem. It's been around here forever. Just right now, they are, their numbers are getting pretty high, as well as new guys here in South Texas. Um, but the way I like to put it is, is hunting plays such an important role in conservation because let's say I have 100 acres and it's fenced in and, it, you know, high fence, deer can't get out, whatever's in there is going to stay there. Those deer are going to continue reproducing. And they go about their business, they go about their life. So maybe five years, if you didn't hunt that land and it's high fence, you know, those deers are already there. They've had that many litters. Of course, you're going to lose some deer to natural causes or to just predators themselves, you know, coyotes. Um, but you'll end up having too many deer. Not enough water, not enough food. You'll start seeing malnutrition deer. You'll start seeing that effect even on their antlers. Um, they'll be a smaller, thinner, not, not as healthy. Mm-hmm. So, to me, having that good control is where you want it. I mean, it, it's as if me and you were to share a, a burger. We'll be fine, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna want more food, right? But it's something for me to eat. Sure. Well, it's good for a day. Now, what if we were to do that for a whole year? Me and you. That's all we're eating. One meal a day. And we're just cutting a burger in half. And then and that's all we're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it, I'm out. One of us got to leave. <laughs> Maybe if we're having a burger, and we're gonna be super unhealthy. Right. But we're still gonna be, you know, eating. We're gonna be fine. We won't be hungry. Um, and then that's the way I like to put it. Is you know, the deer need enough room to roam, enough water, enough food. If there's too many, it plays a terrible Yeah, effect. if we and invite somebody like, else to share that burger with us, exactly. there's less, less of yeah. us to eat and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. So, I mean, hunting just plays a big part into conservation, especially the money that goes into it. I mean, you look at the, uh, you said you do waterfowl for the duck stand, that's mm-hmm. $25. Yeah. Those proceeds go from, you know, primarily to conservation. To, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a lot of little things here and there that help in just such a, a, a big way. Yeah. When it comes to yeah, the, the, I've seen that, and I've seen that uh, that money that we pay for our fishing licenses yeah. and for our duck stand, for migratory bird, or whatever it might be, or access to lands um, goes into conservation and research so that it ends up helping up the environment and the ecosystem. Well, like we said, different style of hunts, different equipment is needed. We've touched up on a lot of stuff, what type of game we can harvest down here in South Texas, and how conservation is important, uh, relying on hunting, right? So hopefully we can get this week rolling. We have some really good stuff coming at you for hunting, set up a hunt, maybe a little bit of cooking our our, our harvest. In hope, in hope, yeah, yeah, in hope. God willing, take. everything goes good. and. We get a, we're going to be doing our part, hopefully, and taking out some of those piggies that are destroying some farms. And I'm really excited um, for me, being a beginning hunter, okay. um, hearing some of the information from the hunt coordinator, Sarge Vasquez, of how you guys and myself can get involved and register for some of the draw hunts that they have to offer at La Cunata Cosa. So stay tuned for this rest of the week. There's some exciting stuff that we have coming at you guys.